Hi everyone, welcome to the Prime U series of interviews with top business and technology experts. In this interview episode, I'm delighted to welcome Ben Sigelman, who is co-founder and CEO at Lightstep, and also RJ Janendra, who is Vice President of Emerging Business S at ServiceNow. Ben, RJ, thank you so much for taking the time to join us today. It's a great pleasure to welcome you to the show. Hi, Dana. It's really nice to be here. Yeah, thank you. So, Ben, my first question is to you. Lightstep is a well-known company that has managed to build a robust observability platform. So I was wondering if you could give us the understanding what is the reason and uh, inspiration right, to build incident response product that you are uh, about to release. Sure. Um, I'll, I'll hand off to RJ to talk a lot about the instant response offering specifically, but just to explain our point of view, we really see observability as having three layers. The bottom layer is the data itself, the telemetry, and for that we created the Open Telemetry Project, which has now been adopted by basically all of our competitors <laughs> and the uh, major cloud providers, which is a great way to democratize access to the data. Then there's storage, where Lightstep, I think, has innovated quite a bit in um, creating uh, like a unified storage engine for um, tracing and metrics data. And then there's workflow. And workflow is where the value is actually delivered and where our Lightstep's customers and users actually um, you know, perceive some benefits, right? And uh, workflows right now uh, are mostly centered around either performance analysis, uh, generalized debugging and production, or instant response. And for instant response, it just seems silly to have um, two totally separate products that have to interact through some sort of bridge. And it's much more natural for our customers who are incredibly concerned with the number of seconds it takes to resolve an incident. Like they should be able to use Lightstep's platform for the full soup to nuts instant response process, which touches on observability, of course, but especially touches on like dedicated workflows um, oriented around incident management. And, and that's really where the instant response product comes in. And RJ, do you want to talk a little bit about it? I think uh, you nailed it there, Ben. Essentially, if you think of observability as uh, kind of giving you that insight, you know, the observed part of it, instant response then is the action that you need to take to uh, deal with uh, you know, any signals that might need attention. Yeah, Ben and RJ, you're both making very interesting points here. I also wanted to clarify whether having observability on one side and having incident response product on the other side or having them close together, would that have any positive impact on um, financial part of uh, your clients that are using these tools, right? Does, would that increase the cost of support? Would that increase, uh, decrease the time uh, for uh, maintenance, right? For uh, fixing the bugs? So certainly there is a financial impact because uh, if you think about how customers uh, are using observability and incident response, uh, this is to make their uh, services reliable and resilient. And so uptime matters, right? Um, and so you know, nobody is really happy if say, you know, the Netflix goes down, right? And so how do you make sure that uh, the uh, applications are up and running? And so the benefit of having observability and incident response close together is that it really allows the context to flow seamlessly from the observability tools uh, that uh, makes it uh, quicker to understand why the problem is occurring, right? And, and you know, usually the first question is, you know, what has changed? And then uh, a follow-up question may be, what else is impacted? Uh, and so, you know, these types of questions are answered by Lightstep Observability and making that information available in the instant response helps the SRE teams to react very quickly where seconds and minutes do matter in uh, uptime. Yeah, that's pretty much clear. I got this. Ben, would you like, what would be your take on that? Would you like to add anything to RJ's response? I, I think RJ nailed it, really. I mean, our customers, um, uh, the the damage, both immediate economic damage, but especially the brand damage of having um, product outages is is just, it can be devastating, actually. So being able to manage incidents um, with a lot of confidence and clarity is is a priority for really every one of our customers. Yeah, that, that is pretty much clear. I believe many of our listeners and people of business would understand that any website uh, downtime would have 
serious or severe impact on revenue, revenue loss, also brand image and uh, potential customers that are unable to complete their purchases or activity on the website. So my next question, you know, I would like you to, I would be keen to know, right, if you could elaborate a little bit more on your long-term goals for Lightstep. Do you plan to develop the company as entirely a SRE platform? Uh, so if you could uh, share that with us. Uh, I mean, it's a, it's a great question. I, I think the, the way that I think about Lightstep in terms of our mission, it's really about uh, creating confidence and clarity for the teams that are um, responsible for like every aspect of delivering uh, software, the software that powers our daily lives, right? So Lightstep is very much focused on really large, um, you know, often planet scale software applications. Um, and uh, certainly SRE is an aspect of that. I mean, the reason why Lightstep is part of ServiceNow is that ServiceNow has done so much to innovate and create a platform of its own that's uh, now addressing workflows for many different types of knowledge workers across an organization. And the vision for Lightstep um, as, a, as a brand, I think, does tend to focus more on these cloud native engineering teams. But as part of ServiceNow, our vision is to take those sorts of insights. And, and just like we're creating, uh, I think, as RJ discussed, uh, in taking the insight of observability and making it actionable for SRE, we can also make um, the insights that we discover through Lightstep's platform actionable actionable across many different aspects of, uh, of, you know, just general purpose operations. So for SRE, but also for, you know, customer success, security, uh, IT operations, you name it. Um, so there's a lot of things that, that we see uh, long term uh, being relevant to our mission of, of, of improving, you know, the rate of innovation and reliability for these sorts of uh, planet scale applications. RJ, uh, I would be curious if there is anything that you have already to offer to your current customers in that domain. So what we're launching now, so in addition to the Lightstep observability products that have been in market, we're launching the Lightstep Instant Response product. And that is geared towards SREs. And it really um, it provides the SRE teams the ability to act on um, any signals that they're getting from the observability tools. And, and so, uh, yeah, and Lightstep Instant Response, that's the first of many products that we're building. Um, and there will be subsequent products as we think about um, for these teams that are responsible for delivering the reliable and resilient services, what are the other workflows that they might need to consider? And so we will continue to um, build out the products uh, in that regard. And at the end of the day, we do think about the entire scope of application development you know, as our customers are building more and more applications and, and these are critical applications that drive how they engage with uh, their customers and their employees. So we definitely look at expanding our solutions to serve that entire life cycle. How do companies like Lightstep and ServiceNow um, foster innovation culture to be able to deliver that array of innovative products and services right across many domains. So if you could share with uh, our listeners, that would be uh, really interesting to hear. I can take that, I guess, RJ. Uh, I, I think um, it's been really interesting joining ServiceNow, actually, because it's obviously like a huge business. I mean, you can look at the market cap or the earnings results to see, I mean, it's generating like roughly $5 billion a year of revenue, right? Um, uh, and it's still incredibly focused on individual customers and listening very carefully. I've, I was just blown away, actually, when I joined ServiceNow at the level of uh, precision and specificity that I see everyone, certainly not just sales, but people across product and engineering talking about specific customer pain and issues that we can address together. And I think that speaks to the success that ServiceNow has seen as a business. So I think um, what, what we find is that there's uh, a pattern of you know talking with individual customers about specific problems, then finding the patterns in five or 10 of them, and then generalizing to something that can service the, you know, many, 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 you know, thousands and tens of thousands of like large service enterprise customers. Um, that approach to delivering product, I think, uh, is 
incredibly sound for, if you're actually trying to address like real problems instead of just imagining what a customer might be dealing with. And, and it's just been amazing to see how ServiceNow has managed to scale that approach to product development and value delivery, I guess. Um, and uh, so that's piece one. And then for LightStep specifically, um, you know, pre-acquisition, um, our way of delivering software was incredibly different than ServiceNow's way of delivering software in that we're on this ex extremely high velocity um, cadence where we, d we deploy dozens of times a day actually to production, right? And, and I think ServiceNow in the past has often replatformed acquisitions. In LightStep's case, for a number of reasons, um, this just you know, being uh, one of many, um, we're, we're not doing that. So I think LightStep's um, way of actually delivering value and innovating from a software development methodology standpoint has actually been kind of intentionally untouched. And so we're still delivering software 20 times a day um, to production. And, and that's not, there's no, there's no plan or, you know, even kind of possible plan, I think, to change that uh, as part of ServiceNow. So that, I think it's a combination of this incredible customer focus that ServiceNow has managed to scale with LightStep's own approach to software delivery, um, which is just ultra high velocity and, and quite cloud native internally, that um, the pairing of those, I think, is very exciting, if that makes sense. Yeah, RJ, uh, I would be also curious to hear your perspective on the type of talent or type of people you're looking to bring to your teams to be able to deliver, you know, these incredible uh, products and services that you have at ServiceNow. So tell us more about the, you know, the skills and the mindset that you are looking uh, for in the people that you are hiring at your teams and your company. Uh, thanks for that question, Dana. Um, like everybody else, we're growing the team, and so I appreciate uh, the ability to talk to that. Um, but uh, as Ben mentioned, you know the north star for us is customer uh, customers and customer engagement is uh, what drives a, a lot of uh, what we do. And so from that perspective, um, you know we're looking for folks to join who are who share that uh, sort of vision and, and approach to the work that they do. Um, and also um, uh, on the on the product side, on the technology front, very much thinking about you know uh, what does uh, sort of the the modern way of building applications look like in terms of you know, leveraging uh, cloud architectures, but also being able to leverage uh, data in making product decisions. Right, I, I think we we are entering this age, or or have been for a few years, where there's a, a tremendous amount of information or data that's available to product teams to be able to incorporate in making decisions and really looking at um, sort of running a lot of different kinds of experiments in terms of what might push adoption further. Um, not every experiment works out, or if every experiment works out, maybe you're being too cautious, right? So we are looking for folks who understand how to build applications uh, in, a, in a modern way with a, a heavy eye towards this kind of data and experimentation. Yeah, that is very interesting. And as far as I understand, uh, acquisitions play an important role in uh, ServiceNow's business growth strategy. So I would be curious to hear your perspective on how can companies that are being acquired have smooth integration process as smooth as possible and also for larger enterprises that are acquiring smaller companies, smaller innovative businesses, how can they ensure that there is alignment in uh, communication, culture and values, right, with the larger organization? It's a, it's a good question. I mean, probably could spend an hour trying to answer that one. Um, and I, uh, I won't for your benefit and for your viewers benefit. But I think in my mind, the number, the number one thing, it sounds a little bit tacky, but I really mean it is to ensure that there's some alignment on values. Um, I don't think of culture as being a static thing and culture should actually change. But in fact, at times standalone, people would complain about LightStep's culture changing as we grew from 10 people to 100 people. And I was just like, that's completely unavoidable and actually not something to fight. It's normal for culture to change, but values really shouldn't change and need to be, um, you know, need to be a, part, a kind of durable part of the organization. And, uh, and I think both by looking at how they are written down and then also just through talking with the leadership at ServiceNow, there's a ton of alignment around, the, around what we value just from uh, like a work standpoint. Because if that starts to fall out of alignment, um, 
uh, you can end up with a very unhappy acquired company and then it's just like a total loss, right? So values alignment is really the first thing I would say because um, if, uh, if that's good, then I think everyone actually feels pretty happy about the individual personal relationships and if it's bad, then things fall apart very quickly independent of any kind of business alignment, right? Um, the second thing I would focus on is um, allowing the acquired company to continue to do what it does well. In this case, I think ServiceNow has been just absolutely astonishingly good um, in that light step, uh, both as a brand and as a team of humans and as a set of products, um, has been allowed to innovate quite freely, actually, um, without much interference in process, even when those processes differed from the way ServiceNow does things. And I think that's been enormously valuable, as we already spoke about. Uh, and then the third thing is just, um, it's just business stuff, right? But just like finding a way to actually engage with customers and spend time in the field. Um, Lightstep um, has a lot to offer ServiceNow uh, from a business standpoint long term, but our business was considerably smaller than $5 billion of revenue a year when we were acquired. So there's always a challenge for, you know, how do you, how do you make all that work? And that's just, again, a, a function of having really good leadership. And I think the sales leadership at ServiceNow is just stellar, and they've actually been quite um, helpful to us, uh, not just in terms of like making money, but that of course, but also in terms of helping us understand the ServiceNow customers and what they value and, and, and having a, a pretty rich dialogue on that front. So those are the aspects that seem the most important to me. Uh, and I think those have all gone really well for Lightstep, which is why we've had just incredible retention, employee retention uh, since the acquisition, frankly, better than our standalone employee retention, which is already quite good and above average for the industry. So um, it's been really fun. Um, and for us, it allows us to think on a much longer event horizon. As a startup, you never, you have the, if you're lucky, you can think a year ahead. But generally speaking, it's like, you can't really think beyond six months because everything, it's always just like, you know, innovate or die kind of feeling. And it, and the time horizon gets very sh short. As part of ServiceNow, we can think about where we want to be in three years and five years and actually plan around that which for me as a product thinker is incredibly liberating actually um, and, and like really wonderful. So I think a lot of folks are actually um, like feeling the same way, which is like very happy about what this does for us as an innovative company. Um, yeah, I agree with uh, what uh, Ben said, you know, culture is something, even at ServiceNow, I've been here for a little over uh, three and a half years um, and the company's changed. It was about 7,000 folks when I joined and now we're north of 16. And so um, culture does evolve over time, but uh, I think sh as long as there's that shared purpose of uh, you know, what we're trying to accomplish, um, I think that really is that uh, sort of that uh, key factor in, in driving success. And, and for, us, for us, it really uh, is about making our customers successful um, and, and that's the North Star. Yeah, so how does Lightstep fit into ServiceNow's vision um, as a parent company. Right, so, so ServiceNow is going to continue to leverage Lightstep to extend the benefits of observability across the enterprise through solutions that take these real-time insights and convert them into actions. Um, and uh, as we expand these uh, insights uh, and we kind of seamlessly link the team-based developments that, that is happening into a centralized uh, uh, organization, um, it really helps the customers kind of work across blended technology stacks. It enables kind of this transition to modern architectures and the move to the cloud. And so we look to continue to bringing uh, additional solutions in the space. Thank you for sharing your vision for, for the industry and also on your view on innovations and uh, the development of the industry in the domain. It's been a great pleasure to talk to you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thanks, Dana. It's been a pleasure.